you can do stuff by yourself. You don't have to have anybody with you. You can go to a room full of strange people and you can make it your own and you can start defining your life that way. I could either let my anxiety rule my life or I was going to rule my anxiety. And I think at that point I said, I'm going to rule my anxiety. And that was in May. Hello, welcome to Monetizing Mompreneurs podcast where I take you behind the scenes with industry leaders, entrepreneurs, moms, working professionals, and amazing people pursuing their passions and going for their dreams. And I'm your host, Linda Mendable. Melissa is a mom who is entering the next chapter of her life, empty nesting. She's a mom to three beautiful daughters and a mom-in-law to one amazing son. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, crafting, binge watching Heart of Dixie on Netflix and encouraging others to be their best self. Melissa is the host of a Facebook live talk show called Chats from the Blog Cabin. In this form, she isn't afraid to tackle those hard topics. I think you're truly going to enjoy this episode with Melissa. Let's dive in. Okay. Welcome, Melissa. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy to be here. So can you tell our audience a little bit about you and what you do? I am actually a blogger. I blog at Adventures of Frugal Mom, and I have several other blogs, but Adventures of Frugal Mom is my main blog. And I actually just recently started doing Facebook Lives two times a week called Chats for the Blog Cabin, which I'm talking to you from the blog cabin. It's a storage shed that we bought and I paid for through my own money and my husband with his sweat equity and I bought all the materials with what I earned with my blogging and created this office for me outside the home because I've wow. always dreamed of having an office outside the home. Congratulations. It looks beautiful, by the way. I'm like loving all of your backgrounds. I see Audrey over there. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> So what made you, so, okay, everyone has like this journey that they go through. So what did your journey look like when you first started? Like what made you end up into blogging and what you do now? Actually, a friend of mine actually said that I needed to start blogging because everything that I was doing, like for deals and couponing, she was doing and making money blogging for it. So I started that way, but I soon found out that coupon and deal blogs was not for me because there's so much competition so then I started going to more toward lifestyle blogging and so I started that in 2011. And how has it been for you? It was great for a while it was just part-time because I was working at a local school as a substitute teacher but in 2014 when I caught the bottom fell out of my whole world my daughter we thought had a brain tumor but she ended up with epilepsy we had a car accident and I had to take a leave of absence from school. And then wow. ended up at the end of the year, my dad going into hospice care and dying. If it wasn't for my blog and what I was doing, I was able to go full time with that and be able to be present with the family during all this time. Amen. I mean, that is, I mean, what I've noticed is sometimes those storms when they hit us, there are opportunities for us to really decide, okay, what do I really want? What's really important for me? And how can I make that happen? I know for me, the same thing happened when I can, like recently, actually, I actually, for some reason, all of the stress with the Rona, all of the stress with just personal things, I could not sleep. And I ended up like in the hospital because I couldn't sleep wow. for like oh, wow. six, five to six days. I was not sleeping. I did reach out to my support system and everything like that, which, are, which is my family. But in that same week, and this is like for me, just how amazing things can, can go. And for me, I like to say that's like a sign from God for me. I know some other people may be different for them, but that was just a sign for me that Linda, you know what you're doing. You can teach others what you're doing because in that hospital stay, I almost like I was close to making just a thousand dollars in that one week that I was not posting on social media, that I was not on social media, you know, but because of my systems and everything like and everything, I was able to just maintain my business and keep it rolling. And I was like, wow. 
even though there's always a silver lining in our setbacks, right? So how did you find your silver, silver lining when that happened, when you knew about your daughter and then the hospice? I mean, that is, those are hard hits. How did you deal with them? Actually, it was kind of, I leaned a lot on my faith. During the, my dad's funeral, this lady who I grew up with, her son, he was like a little brother to me, told me that all these trials you're going through is God pulling you closer to him. And honestly, I do believe that looking back now, going through it, no, I wouldn't have said it. But looking back, I can see there was only, that was the only way I could have made it through was with his help. And he, Hebrews 619 is like my favorite verses. Basically paraphrased through all the storms in my anchor holes and God's the anchor. And I give, all, give him all the glory for everything. Amen. Amen. Same, same girl, because there's some things that, that you just can't, I mean, you can't make it up. It just hits you so hard. But then you learn in the process is him driving closer to him and closer to your calling. Yep. So what was the silver lining to you? I know you said a little bit about your blogging, but really, like, what was your aha moment in the, in, in the midst of all of that? I don't think there was one, honestly. I think it was just everything kind of like the perfect storm with everything going on. I was just like, I just can't go back to the school with so many memories because my dad volunteered out there. There was just too many memories. I was fresh from, you know, all that turmoil. And I was like, yeah, God, if you want me to go full, full time blogging, show me a way. And I think I got at that point, Bush Gardens, they had an ambassador thing. And like all these big bloggers were applying for it. And I actually got the amb- one of the ambassadorships for Bush Gardens. Wow. And so that was like a sign saying you're on the right path of where you need to be. Yeah. Okay. Now, so tell us a little bit of, of your blog, Cabin. How did you even have the idea about it? Well, I'd always dreamed of having an office outside the home. Because, you know, when you work in the home and there's laundry, there's dishes, there's clutter, there's everything around and it just is so distracting. So I said, you know what, I'm going to look for an office space. And I kept saying, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Why am I going to go rent something when I can buy something? And around that time, the tiny home started to become really popular on Home and Garden TV. And I was like, I can do that. So actually a friend of ours has a lot that they sell storage buildings. And so I went out there and looked, I actually wanted a bigger one. My husband talked me into getting the smaller one, but now I'm kicking myself because I actually want the bigger one because I want to be able to have people over and just relax in the blog cabin. But that's basically how it came about. Okay. So you had the idea. Now, how did you even take the steps to move forward with it? That was another thing, a leap of faith because It started in 2018, that whole little thing. I actually went on a trip to Fayetteville. First time ever driving in a car by myself. I have huge anxiety about driving in a car by myself on a major highway. Too many times being in that car accident, so hit from behind, so I don't do the big highways. If I have to, I go the back roads. But went to Fayetteville by myself for a blogger event, and I think, honestly, that was my turning point, saying, okay, you can do this. You can do stuff by yourself. You don't have to have anybody with you. You can go to a room full of strange people and you can make it your own and you can start defining your life that way. I could either let my anxiety rule my life or I was going to rule my anxiety. And I think at that point I said, I'm going to rule my anxiety. And that was in May. By the end of May, I had bought already purchased the blog cabin I stepped out and said okay I'm doing it I'm buying it and I bought it my husband didn't like I said did not pay for anything he did sweat equity he did everything inside so I do give him credit for that but everything was me amen amen so I love your story of what you said and I want to touch a bit about it because Sometimes we think that we need other people around us to support us. Or sometimes we think that we need someone beside us to go to an event. Mm -hmm. And legit, we get anxiety, you know, just by thinking about it. 
So I love this because people think that sometimes these bloggers that you see them just knocking it out, knocking posts, that they don't deal with anxiety. But I truly believe, like I know I deal with anxiety. You would you say that you deal with anxiety? Oh, still to this day. I mean, even like right now before we got on this call, I was like, okay, all right, let me. But I have things in place. Like I have two songs that I listen to before I even go on any lives or anything you say by Lauren was it Dangle and the other one is yes. Holy Spirit by Francesca I forget how to pronounce her last yes. name yes yes I know but I know what you're talking about yes they're, they're very calming to me and I have certain things certain routine that I have to do to get just to where I'm calm and peace we're talking about anxiety and moving into your purpose one of the things that we talked about is like how everyone faces anxiety how everyone just sees it deals with it but regardless of the fear and the anxiety we step towards what we are meant and called to do so what would you tell our listeners if they were going if they're facing like massive anxiety what would you tell them how can they come out of it like what do you do to come out of your anxiety other than okay we listen to a song but what else do you do pray i mean even before i would get on the road driving by myself i would pray and like lord you've got this i know you've got me don't let the devil get in my head. And, and when I get there, I know you meant for me to be there. So show me who, what one person that, you know, one friendly face is going to show me that, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So That's awesome. I do the same thing. Prayer is definitely like one of my choices. Now we have your blog cabin. We got your to-do list. You purchased it. You took the leap of faith. You're working at it. How did you find the materials for you to build out, like, your item? Like, what? You just took a leap of faith, but you did you know the materials or not? I have been studying a lot of Pinterest. I have a Pinterest board that just basically said blog cabin with just ideas on it. But as we started going into constructing it and putting it inside, putting the insides in, I was like, you know what? I think I like this better than that. Like, the... These walls here, where you can, one of the side of the walls, three of the walls are beadboard, and then I have a back wall that's a reclaimed fence that we had a fence just hanging around. And so we just took the wood apart and put the fence up. Habitat Three Store is amazing for things like that. We got a, I got a chandelier. All I had to do was spray paint it for $8. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you're resourceful. I like that. So another idea, I love using Pinterest. We are blogging about our process, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are people saying to you while you're doing it? Did people say like, you're crazy or you're never going to get it up there? Like, what did your family and friends say? Honestly, I think my girls were like, okay, because I have three daughters. They were like, okay, mom. All right. Yeah. And one of my daughters is an interior architect major. So she was like, Mom, you need to do it this way. You need to do, it. but her style is more modern and mine's more like farmhouse style. So she's like, okay, fine. I'm just going to school for that. So I had to just let her say what she wanted to say and then get away from it. But yeah. I like that. So in moments that we're facing adversity in moments that, you know, people may be against us or they think they know more than us or mm -hmm. they have their own picture, right? Because sometimes people like put, putting us in a box, right? Mm -hmm. Of what they believe is best for us. So I love what you did. You said you just listened and then you did your own thing. Sometimes we got to do that, right? <laughs> yep, that's for sure. And there, there are some mistakes in here. Like my husband put something in the wrong way. It wasn't what we were talking about. He did it his way instead of what I wanted. But I'm like, you know what? And all said and done, I'm in my office. I'm working. It's, it's okay. But this is like a, a great testimonial or a great like perspective on how we can get our dreams off the ground. Like this was a dream of yours, having your blog cabin and you made it happen. Not a lot of people can do that. Yeah. And, and honestly, I think was, I had a milestone birthday last year. I turned 50 last year. Wow. And congratulations. That you good. Thank what are you. you okay, later you're going to. Okay. No, no, no. What are you using for your skin? <laughs> What is your skincare? So Water? Basically, yep, that's it. <laughs> You've just been blessed with beautiful skin. Yeah. And, and a thick hair. Oh my gosh, my hair is so thick. My hair right now is up, but it's so thick. Amen. But 
so you're turning 50. So you turned la- you had a milestone last year. Okay, tell us more about that. And I knew that I couldn't go on living the rest of my life doing things that stopping and not doing things and being living in fear. I had to get out because I don't want to oh look gosh. back at the rest of my life and say, I regret not doing this. So. That's powerful. You know, so when I had my episode of my panic attack that I couldn't sleep and ended up in the hospital and everything like that, I know for me, I literally felt like I was going to die. And after you have an experience like that, that makes you feel like you're close to, you know, death's door mm-hmm. <laughs> or, you're, you know, even though like you may not be, but like sometimes life can hit you in a way like, oh my gosh how much time do I have left? Right. Or, Oh my gosh, what am I leaving behind? And those were the questions that I was faced with. And that's one of the reasons I decided to put up my big women pants and put them up and like get going because at the end of the day, what we leave behind is what matters and what people are going to remember. And I learned that from in October, 2019, my, my brother had passed away. Mm. And my brother and I, we are 11 months apart. So we're called like Irish twins. Mm -hmm. Growing up, we were the same age for a full month. He was January 1st. I was January 29 that I was born. (laughs) And I am the older sister and he was my little brother. Oh. But knowing like one of my biggest thing, I did not want people to forget him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you because I lost a sister when I was six months pregnant with my oldest daughter. And I'm so sorry. And it's, and it triggers me now because the, her name is the name that everybody uses for these white women. Karen, that was her name. And that's actually my middle daughter, my oldest daughter's one of her middle names. And I'm like, and she's not, well, my husband is a native of Mexico. So, so she's Mexican American. Yeah, I am so sorry for your loss. There, there really you. are no words. There really yeah. are no words. You can, because it, it's impossible to speak about a lifetime in in just a few seconds or minutes, you know. And you know, for those of you out there that have lost a loved one, we feel your pain. We yeah. understand what you're going through, you know. And if you need help, like reach out to your community or even reach out to mental health like right now that's a big deal and i actually condone it when people are going through hard Hard times i do say hey go ahead and see a therapist go ahead and see and seek the help that you need i think in our society we have made mental health such a taboo thing but it's a real thing yeah that's true and it's so real it is so real i mean mental health is should be the number one thing that people look at not anything else because everything else dwindles that comes down from it you know what you do in your life it's your mental health your mindset if you're not in the great mindset then you're not going to have that great life that you want because you're always going to be suffering from all these other anxieties and all these other which comes and manifest in headaches and not sleeping and and overeating and all this other stuff oh yeah i am a big overeater (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hello, my name is Linda Mendable, and I am at times an overeater. Hi, all. Yep. <laughs> but I am because of what happened, because of losing my brother, having this whole lockdown, having my schedule just completely. I have three little ones. You know, my oldest is about to be seven in September. And I don't know when you guys are hearing this, but we are going to be launching the podcast each week come, starting in August 2019. And so this one will probably launch sometime in the fall. But um, my oldest is, seven, is going to be seven. My next one is four. And then my, my little one is going to be um, two. Wow. And so, yeah, that's, that's, a big, that's a big thing because some people don't take naps. Like my oldest, he does not take a nap. And so when the whole Rona with with the lockdown school closing it just i actually had to play some like high vibe music during that time because i i just wanted to i gotta vibrate i gotta vibrate higher (laughs) i gotta vibe higher (laughs) i gotta get closer to the light (laughs) 
But during that time, it was really difficult for me and just processing everything from still grieving, still having certain to take, to have responsibilities, you know, and everything just landing on our shoulders. For me, it was a wake up call to be like, what are you doing with your life? Mm -hmm. Linda, like really, what are you doing with your life? And I want everyone in here to really question that. Like, what are you doing with your life right now? What are you afraid of that is preventing you from getting to that next level, from creating that blog cabin, from creating, you know, (laughs) their own space, from creating their blog that they know they can make it thrive? Because it doesn't matter what other people say at the end of the day is going to be what you leave behind and what you think about yourself. Yeah, that's true. And I never knew in 2018 when I bought this blog cabin, the idea came to me and I pulled the trigger that I was going to be launching in May of this year, chats from the blog cabin. I did it as part of a challenge and I had a friend come on and we talked about friendship and then who know now I'm doing lives on Facebook, two times a week. Congratulations. And I used to be one that was very afraid and hated to be in front of the camera. I would rather be behind the camera. And here I am now doing live chats on Facebook. Yes. And we are going to be going live in Facebook right after this chat. So if you are part of the community of community of our Facebook group called Monetizing Mompreneurs, you're going to be seeing weekly chats from our podcast guests. So make sure that you join our group. And Melissa, so you're going to be doing twice a week. So what is it that you guys talk about in your... We talk about a whole bunch of different things. I mean, because it's basically it's an open, open channel because it's my blog page. But I recently had two panels on race, one with women of different races and nationality and one with men of different races and nationality. And we talked about, you know, what we can do, some of the misconceptions surrounding race and how we can get past it and actually listen to each other and learn from each other. Because that's my biggest thing is I want people to learn. I want people to listen and start talking to each other about the important issues, not just the issues that, you know, people are so scared to shy away from. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's one of the biggest things for me is because no matter what level you're on, there's always something to learn. Mm -hmm. There's always a different perspective. And with social media, with blogging, things are always constantly changing and you never know when there's something that can add a value to what you're doing. So that's why I really push people go ahead and just start because the way that you start may open the eyes to so many other people because the way that you process and the way that you think is truly unique and people need that. You know, like the way that you go about in your blogging or in promoting your services or promoting what you do is going to be different the way that I do that. It doesn't mean that it's wrong any which way. It just means that it's different. And you never know what style you may incorporate. It's almost like cooking. You know, you never know what sauce you might need to put in in the pot, you know, to make that, to make a sizzle, you know. Or you don't know how spicy you want it. There's some people that want it super mild, like myself, or super spicy, like my husband. You know, it's just... (laughs) Hey, I am outside in my lovely garden and I wanted to invite you. I'm all about running a smooth household while growing your biz. So I've partnered with Ashley from Elegant Homes on helping you build your custom home rhythms. We'll be going live this Wednesday, August 24th, and I'm spilling the beans on how to join my new program called Monetizing Mompreneur Society on how to create a recurring income stream, launch your own digital products, and scale your business with ease. Join us this August 24th on Wednesday. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be live. Go ahead and go to lindamendable.com and grab the link. You're not going to want to miss this one. We went from idea, what we do when people basically think they know it all and and they want us to do it a certain way. We listen Uh to them 
and then we go ahead and do it how we want to do it. Do it, yeah. <laughs> saves for a lot of arguments. <laughs> yes, it saves you from arguments, you know, because sometimes at the end of the day, people just want to say their piece, you know, and they don't really want you to tell them anything. They just want to say their piece. So we got that. Then we are in Pinterest mode, you know, because it's good to get ideas, search for ideas. Okay, how do we want things to look? What, you know, mm-hmm. what's our style? We can actually get a bigger and better picture, picture of what it is that we like. Yep. Then what's next after that? Then putting it all into place and trying to find, like I said, we got a lot of the stuff from Lowe's and uh, Habitat Restore. But then there was like, I had was trying to find molding for the top part of the cabin. And we ended up using two by fours because the cabin has, I call it a block cabin because it's a short storage shed, but it's a block it, already cabin. Had, it already had the rafters, the original beams, the wood beams. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to stain those. And we just continued the beadboard up on the ceiling in between the beams, but we turned it to, so it's a different way than the way it is on the wall. Nice. So, and so the two by fours just fill out on the side for the molding. So I wouldn't have to spend like $30, $40 just for one piece of molding. And I would have needed several pieces. So being resourceful and innovative is another yes. thing. Yes. Seeing how we can fit things together. Now, when you were, was there any point in the process that you wanted to just give up? Oh, yeah, definitely. The biggest, the biggest thing was electricity because we had to depend on someone else to come in and put the electricity in for us. And we had to wait for this person and wait for this person. You know how it is when you're waiting for service people. Not to say that they're not all bad because I know they all have timelines, but you want it done then and they have their places they have to be first before they can get to you. So it took a while and I was very frustrated at that because that was like the one thing that my husband couldn't do by himself. He had to have someone help put in it. But I love that. I love that because there's going to be moments in our dream or in our business or even with our blogging that we're going to have to reach out and ask for help and make an investment, right? Yep. We can invest because there's certain areas that we are not an expert in or there's certain areas that we need a special eye that deals with it time and time and time again that actually saves us more money and time in the, at the end of the day, right? Yep. Totally true. So that's awesome. Okay. So now we are investing in ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We got the ideas. We first, we got the naysayers, right? We got the idea naysayers. Then we got the Pinterest going on. We got the outline. We decided because of the outline and what we wanted, where we can invest for help because certain areas are not in our expertise. And okay. You said that there were some moments that you wanted to give up. So after that, like, how do you take yourself out from that mode of thinking of wanting to give up? Because I've had several moments like that. Go ahead. One of the things I did was I actually kind of took an idea from the Flourish Market, which is a boutique in in downtown. Yes, I remember. And I had people come in. Some friends sent me messages that I embedded in the walls. But people came in before we put the walls and insulation up and wrote positive vibes messages on there. And that's Uh actually how the block cabin came to be because one of my friends, Ashley, was coming down from Washington, D.C., going back home to Swansboro, and she stopped by to write on the wall, and she wrote blog cabin, and it just kind of stuck. So I always said that she was the creator of it because I was going to call it blog pod, blog office, but not the blog cabin. But Wow. You see, and so you had other people chip in uh, on your, once you were already in process, mm-hmm. other people have helped you that were positive, believed in you, yep. which actually allowed you to carve out the name and basically build off of it too. Okay. The flourish market for those of you listening The Flourish Market was a boutique that was on a truck, right? Mm -hmm. That they basically drove around downtown Raleigh and and everything like that and actually had some pop-up shops. Mm -hmm. And they sold everything from the truck. It was almost like a food truck, but for fashion. And they eventually got their own spot in downtown Raleigh, right? Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. And they actually just moved over into the warehouse district in downtown Raleigh, a bigger space. 
Wow. And so you can see the growth there, which is completely amazing. And I think it's Emily. Was it Emily that yeah. started it off? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shout out to Emily. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So now we have people that are actually lifting you up that actually believe. So this is what, what's important sometimes. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in spaces or, or recognize our support. One of my biggest supports when I was dealing with my anxiety was having my family. Mm -hmm. They were there to pick me up, to understand that, Linda, this, is, this does not define you. You know, like Moana, this does not define you. I'm not a singer, <laughs> so I apologize. Right? So yeah. we have to understand that our setbacks, the moments that we think that, are, that we failed, are not our definition or do not define who we are. So where was a part in your, in your blog cabin curation that you felt like you failed? Was there any part in the process that you felt like you that there was like a stopping point and you thought like, that's it. I failed. I can't finish this. Or, you know, was there any moment like that? I, I wouldn't say failure, more discouragement. Yes. Because well, not failure because you've made it happen. Yeah. But sometimes we're in those moments. We think it's a failure, right? Or yeah. we're discouraged. So tell us. Yeah. So go ahead. Go when ahead. things weren't going quite as quickly as I wanted them to go. And things weren't like we bought it in May by December. It was pretty much, I would say 95% complete. We just didn't have the flooring down yet. We, it was like plywood and I had stained it. So it still would pass. It was still great to come in, people come in and look at, but still, you know, he didn't, I, I wanted it to be done by August, September, October. And, you know, I wanted to be done before Christmas, but it was done around Christmas time. So that mm -hmm. was kind of discouraging. So when you felt that discouragement, how did you continue? I think I lost your question there, Linda. No. So, okay. So when you felt that discouragement, what made you continue? What did you say to yourself to keep it going? Like, what was your focus? How did you do that? Come out of your discouragement. I actually started coming out here and working, even though it, it wasn't finished. There was no walls, no nothing. I had put my, I told my husband, we're putting my desk out here. We're putting my computer out here where I'm just going to work. I'm going to pretend like it's my office now, even though it's not done yet. And little by little, it started coming together because I was like, I'm in here. It's serious. This is definitely what I need to be doing. And so. Wow. I love that. That's so beautiful. And, you know, I, I, for me, what, what verse comes out for me was, you know, call the things that be not as though they are. Mm -hmm. Right. So you kind of took that, you know, faith without works is dead. So you took yep. your faith. You called it your office. You're like, no, this is my office. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to put my desk out here. Amen. You know, I love, I love that your desk says faith with a little heart because it's so your yeah. blog cabin was a measure of faith. And, you know, I want this to be an example for our listeners because there's these moments that we believe that we're not good enough that yeah. we can achieve certain things. You know, that imposter syndrome comes up because you can easily have said to yourself, I'm not a builder. How can I even build this cabin, right? Yep. No, but when we know something is for us and we go after it and we called it what, what it is and we make it happen, it becomes what we call it. And if we walk by faith towards it, you know, and I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned this 2020 was that, you know, and I apologize if, if I'm dating this, but it was that I know what I am called to do. Mm -hmm. And I decided to step towards it fully and call myself that expert because I am. And even though I'm in somewhat of the beginning stages towards what I'm an expert in, which is in subscriptions and memberships right now, mm -hmm. that's what I'm teaching my clients that's what I have. I have a membership towards that. And I, I decided I'm stepping all the way and I just put myself out there and, and I faced those fears. Okay. So now you're in your office, the elements are there, you're getting discouraged, but you're still moving forward. What made it real for you? 
Mm, I would say the moment the electricity came on. The, wow. that, when they flipped that switch, it was like, yes. That, that was when the, the light turned on. <laughs> because honestly, the guy came in and did the electricity, but there was something wrong with one of the wires. So we, he had to come back the next day so the light wouldn't come on. I'm like, oh, no, there's another, there's another thing that's gone wrong, you know. And then, nope, he came in, he flipped that switch, and it was like, hallelujah. Now we can definitely 100% start doing what I wanted wow. to do. Wow. Wow. And how did you feel? Relief. Because, that was <laughs> because I guess it's because we had to depend on him to do it and we couldn't put insulation. We couldn't put the walls up because he had to come. If you know anything about electricity, they have to route everything first before you can put anything up. So basically with that being a standstill, I think at once that electricity was on, I knew it was going to move faster than what it then. Wow. I would say that would be like building your foundation, right? Yeah. So sure. because you outlined it and now you're building the foundation to turn on the lights, so you can stand. So the blog cabin could stand. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're taking us through a journey and you see what I want our listeners to also understand is that each thing that we decide to make it ours, each thing that we decide to go for it, there is a journey that takes place. You know, and, and a lot of people call it like I know Star Wars, it called it somewhat the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And you have your own hero's journey with your blog cabin, you know, which is so awesome. Now, what was your favorite part about like after you're done, the electricity, all the walls are up, it's insulated. What was one of your favorite parts about it? Uh, I think my favorite part, once it was insulated and done, it happened right around Christmas time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to plan a, a blog cabin opening. And so I had a few of my really close friends who were there supporting me through all this, who hadn't really seen anything on the inside, and even had the people that I bought the blog cabin from to come and look. And, and they actually came out and actually did a video for their site on what I had done. And to me, that was like the greatest thing because they were showing everybody, all their customers on Facebook, yes. what I had done. And everybody was commenting, oh my God, I need to move there, you know, all this stuff. So it was just like, that was like my... my I love family. that, you know, because you actually felt, yeah, you actually felt so amazing sharing, mm -hmm. you know, and while the people that, you know, you bought it from, bought it from at like, you know, when it was just at the beginning stages, come in and share it with their audience. And you felt just like, wow, you know, you felt good about that. And I love that because sharing each other's journey and stories and, and beautiful results, I really feel like that's just like icing on the cake, right? That's just like a top topping, right? Yeah, it is. It's true. And when the they walked in and they were like, oh, where did the beans come from? I was like, well, they were the original ones. Oh, my, my gosh. They do not look like the original ones because we stained them dark. And then we had like a little piece of wood going over to have, add a little bit of depth that was a lighter color than what we stained it. So it looks like it's some kind of depth up there in the ceiling. They were like just amazed at what we did. Wow. And, and how do you feel like now? Okay, so... Boom, you had your opening. What what happened next? Just started working out here more and then the milestone fifty eight birthday hit and it was just like I'm not How old? I, I said fifty. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that milestone hit and I was like, you know what? I'm not allowing anything to define who I am now. I'm gonna go on my own terms and not anybody else's terms. Amen. I love that. I love that. So you, okay. Cause we all have these milestones that we hit. So what is your perspective now? You know, now that you're a bit older, you've, you accomplished things. That I bet that you didn't even know that you can accomplish. Like you said, you knew when you made it by yourself, even though you had the anxiety, you faced your fears and you went out and you drove by yourself and you said to yourself, wow, I can do things by myself. I don't need anyone else. I can do this. Now you're 50, beautiful at 50, made the blog cabin, 
made a thriving business that you can take full time that supports you, helps you and your family. What is your mindset now? I want more. <laughs> I actually, I, like I said, the chats on the blog cabin started out as a challenge. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to start doing it. I love doing it so much, talking and interviewing people. I was a communication major anyways in college. So I'm just like, you know what? I love this. Let me continue. Let me work, build on it along with my, my blog and my brand. And there's a couple of milestone moments that have really stood out to me. One was one of the chats I did was with all three of my girls when my oldest was home from California. And they were talking, somebody had asked the question, what did you learn from your mom and what did you learn from your dad? And one of the things that one of my girls said is that how you can take nothing and build from it. And that they said with me, they saw where I had built from nothing, everything that I had built up. They said there was a long time all you had was 10, follower, 10 followers and now look at you. You have your own office. You've done everything. You've done this. So that for me and my girls' eyes, for them to see that, it was just like the biggest like, oh, you know, for me, it was heartwarming for them to actually appreciate it. I think as moms, as mompreneurs, mm -hmm. that is one of the biggest gifts that we can give to our children is that for mom to go out and do it as well. Uh -huh. And I am not knocking any mom that their heart is just to stay home with their kids, you know, because that is you doing what you love uh -huh. regardless. So it's about us doing what we love as women, you know, as women raising littles, you know, because one of the things I want to tell my children is go for it. And, and then when they come with their excuses, their discouragement, we know when we, they come with their excuses and their discouragement, we know how we can approach them and talk with them. So, Melissa, what is one thing you want to leave behind to our listeners? Just basically get out of your own head and just do it. Because we're our own worst critics. And if we sit in our head the whole time, all this negative talk, keep, we tell ourselves, we're never going to accomplish anything. We're never going to do anything at all. And I had to learn that to get out of my own head. Amen. Where can people find you, Melissa? They can find me on Instagram at Frugal Mom, Adventures of Frugal Mom on Facebook. And then you can visit my blog, AdventuresofFrugalMom.com. Amen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Linda. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have a chance, stop by the website at lindamendable.com. Sign up for the blog cure, which is an awesome, awesome course that I created that will help you set up your blog or take your blog to the next level. And join us over at Monetizing Mompreneurs Facebook group. I just want to say again, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.